Post-war Europe had the perfect backdrop for dramatic filmmaking. The war-torn landscape was real, and the entire world had been transformed. Now, no one is saying that war is good, and I'm certainly not trying to sound like Harry Lime here, but damn, did this produce some of the greatest films ever. From Rossellini to Vittoria De Sica, all the way to Carol Reed, it had an impact. And today, we are going to find out just who the heck really is. The Third Man! To all you out of work soda jerks without a penny to pinch. To the detectives with all the answers. To the dastardly dames who play men like baby dolls. And the trusted ones too pure for this world. And all you double-crossing, backstabbing, ruthless, baby-faced amateurs, this one's for you. So suit up, turn out the lights, put the match to your smokes, and sit back for the darker side of things. Cine Shadow Moonlights, Noir Vimbo. The film opens with the Harry Lime theme, and it's played using a zither. What's a zither, you ask? Well, it'll put you in a dither, that's for sure. The narrator is very casual, showing us the black market and the dead body floating in the river. He's all like, oh yeah, wait, I was gonna tell you about some guy. This guy, it's Holly, an American, played by Joe Cotton, baby. Where'd you come from, where'd you go, where'd you come from, Cotton Eye Joe? Well, not that Cotton Eye Joe. This is Joe Cotton, the actor. He's in Vienna to visit Harry Lime, played by Orson Welles, pre-morbid obesity. He soon finds that Lime has been killed in a car accident and goes to the funeral. There he meets a captain and we find that Lime has a secret past. He's got a reputation. There's a lot Holly doesn't know and this sends him on a quest, talking to different associates and getting different accounts of Lime's death. A Baron Kurtz says he and Popescu carried a dead Lime away. Mrs. Schmidt, Lime's lover, says that this was no accident. And a porter makes claims of a mysterious third man. This whole time we see everything through Dutch angle. We know that everybody is lying. No one's telling the truth. It's like a Dutch angleathon, if that's a word. Holly's been threatened to stop asking questions, and the porter is killed since he is ready to talk to Holly. Holly finds that Lime was diluting penicillin and selling it on the black market, damaging the victim's brains. After leaving Anna's apartment one night, we get one of the best reveals ever. Spoiler! A man is heard from a totally dark doorway, and when a neighbor's light flips on, it's Harry Lime grinning his ass off. He then runs through the darkness, Holly giving chase. And that's what this movie is. One giant section of just different chases throughout. Some of the most dramatic chases ever, and let me tell you about them. Oh, bud, the scenes in this movie especially the chase scenes. The first chase scene is when Holly and Anna head back to his apartment and they find out that the porter's been killed. And the porter's son, who recognizes Holly, starts pointing him out to the crowd, saying things like, him, him, look at him, you know, he had a conversation with my dad. The crowd gets nervous, him being a foreigner and all, and they give chase. There's a great low Dutch angle stair shot with the fog illuminated behind the people. It's awesome. This leads them into a theater, and when he finally gets out to jump into a taxi, the taxi starts driving away all crazy. He thinks, oh crap, dude, they've caught me. And it finally parks abruptly, and he's been delivered to a speech that he's supposed to make. Whoa. Directly after giving his speech... Popescu and a couple of his thugs give chase. This starts a series of very inventive shots. One is pointed straight up in a stairwell. Another in a foggy street with Holly in total shadow. Running through alleyways, 
through war-torn streets, hiding in blown-up cars. It's wild. Another great shot is when Lime has been spotted by Holly. He runs away, and his shadow is huge and looming, almost as big as the buildings. Another great scene is the Ferris wheel scene, when Harry and Holly are finally talking. This is the perfect place to put some Dutch angles again. And once they're off the Ferris wheel, after we find out that Lime really is a morally corrupt man, he gives one of the best speeches of Orson Welles' career. Don't be so gloomy. After all, it's not that awful. Like the fella says, in Italy for 30 years under the Borgias, they had warfare, terror, murder, and bloodshed. But they produced Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, and the Renaissance. In Switzerland, they had brotherly love. They had 500 years of democracy and peace. And what did that produce? The cuckoo clock. So long, Holly. It's awesome. Then at one point, when they're looking for Lime, there's shots of the empty streets and alleyways, intercut with the watchful eye of the law. There's a giant shadow of a man who we assume is Lime, but it's just an old guy carrying balloons. <laughs> the ending of this movie, though, is the absolute highlight. Wow, dude. Mind blown. It's got low angles, high angles, long shots, mediums, close-ups. It has it all. The lighting is perfect. Harry is trapped. All openings are closed up. The whole city is after him. They're in the sewer system, which is where Harry gets along. He shoots a cop and gets shot in the back. Starts to crawl up the stairs, and there's a great angle showing his face through the opening in the steps. He reaches the grate and sticks his finger through. They are writhing to no avail. There's no escape. He does himself in. Oh, crap, dude. It really is awesome. There's the light illuminating everything and the shadows from the tunnels, man. Just, you gotta see it, dude. Look, guys, if you haven't seen the film yet, give it a watch. And if you can't find it, Hey, come on over to my place and watch it. You know, I got it on Blu-ray. You know, we can we can sit here and have you know popcorn. We can like have like a really good time. Like because you know I've been I've been in this room by myself. You know, for the, all these weeks watching, and I'm talking to a camera, and I don't even know if I'm talking to real people. And I'm kind of going mad. And just please, will you just please come over? Will you just please come over to my house? I just, I need somebody here with me. I have had no one. I'm alone. My hair keeps growing and keeps getting crazier.